Hello there, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 330 of Love at First Scent with a <clears throat> slightly croaky voiced, croaky voiced Persilase coming to you live from YouTube. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do consider doing so. If you would like to find out how you can support my work, you should be able to see a link to my coffee page in the video description below. And I've even missed the first comment because loads and loads of you have been commenting already, but I'm pretty sure that the first comment went to Rachel, who said, Hi, Mr. P, so excited you're reviewing La Douleur Exquise. Joe is here as well, saying good afternoon from a snowy West Sussex. No snow at all in the south of England, at least not where we are. Everybody's asking if you're feeling better, Rachel, so I hope you're feeling better. And a special hello as well to the extremely smartly turned out gentleman who stopped me at Waterloo Station the other day and said, are you Persilase? <laughs> Which is not something that happens very often, but is really, really lovely when it does happen, especially when the people who stopped me are as, are as charming as this particular gentleman was. So <clears throat> if you are watching, you know who you are. Thank you very much for stopping and saying hello. <clears throat> lots and lots of cold comments coming through from people. Um, Kat C is here saying hello from Edinburgh, finally attending another live. Shiva says, I'm intensely awaiting this review. Um, and we will, we will get to, um, I think most of these, if not all of them, very, very soon. But the plan for today is that this is, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't start on a downer. The plan for today is that we're doing this video in which we will try to cover as many of these scents as possible, as I just said. Then we will take a two minute break and we will come back with a classic scent review video, a perfume that is celebrating a really, really big anniversary this year or has celebrated a big anniversary this year. And for weeks and weeks and weeks, I thought I need to do a special video on it. And then I suddenly realized we're nearly in mid-December and I haven't done it. So that is what we will do. This is obviously only for the benefit of those of you watching live. And that will bring us to the end of our regular series of videos for 2022 for this year. There's going to be an extended break and then all being well, if everything goes according to plan, I will be back on the 30th of December with a rundown of my top 10 perfumes of the year. Paolo says, hello, Mr. Persilase. I hope everyone's doing well. This is the perfect companion for a very rainy afternoon here is in, in how do you say that? Viso, Viso, Portugal. <clears throat> Les Abstre has finally arrived, says JP Music. <clears throat> I don't know what is wrong with me. I just had a cup of tea before we started. I didn't think it would affect me like this. Let's do a proper cough. <clears throat> and now I can't speak at all. <clears throat> anyway, as long as as long as this is intact, which I think it is. So this is a brand that uh, launched this year. Let's give one of the bottles um, the attention it deserves in the spotlight. The brand is Les Abstraits. And as I'm sure a lot of you know, because I think many of you watching live right now actually experienced this brand's perfumes before I did, a lot of you will know that it was actually founded by Eugene of the very, very, very popular, highly popular You Smells Good channel, channel a fragrance reviewer, perfume critic in his own right. And a little while ago, he clearly decided that he wanted to start his own brand and he has released two scents so far, uh, La Douleur Exquise, and a little while ago we also got uh, Belle Am. And both of the perfumes thus far have been made by the one and only Antoine Lee. And the materials from the, for them come from the um, Atelier Francais de Matière, um, the company founded and run by uh, Rémi Pulverai, who obviously is no stranger to this channel. Now, I have smelt both of them already. Um, I've, I've worn them both, and I thought we can't end the year without doing a sort of formal uh, mention of them, even though I, I kind of feel I'm a little bit late to the Les Abstraits party. Um, <clears throat> and I would very, very, very much like to get Eugene to come onto the channel and talk about these. And my memory is obviously sh completely shot to bits already today, because I've got it kind of in my head that I think I've already asked him if he'd like to come on the channel, and I think he said yes, but I may have just completely made that up. So forgive me, Eugene, if you some you know if you've watched this and actually you haven't agreed to anything. 
But um, let's start with Bell Am. Let's start with um, the more recent release. Um, here we go. I'm sure Eugene would come on, says Joe. Um, well, I would love it if he did. And OK, here we go. I can't believe we're almost at the end. Where has this year gone? OK. Yeah, and I'm getting... It's very, very strange with the effect that Bellam had on me. Because um, I wore it a couple of times and I thought, OK, let's put it away for a little bit and, and see if the association returns the next time I, I, I smell it. P. Jones says, I'm wearing Bell Am today. Eura says, my favourite iris in ages. Um, so yes, that's a good sort of starting point. It very, very, very definitely comes out as um, an iris. But there is way, way more to it than that. Um, and I think I'm just going to go straight for where I'm going with this. The first time I smelt it, and when I wore it, and the second time I wore it, I could not stop thinking of Amouage Reflection. I'm still now thinking of Amouage Reflection. Um, so please, please tell me I'm not going crazy. Oh, Rachel says yes. Okay, has, 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 have people already said this about this perfume? That it's like a kind of take on Amouage Reflection. But the, the, the interesting thing is, the interesting thing is, I am not the world's biggest fan of Amouage Reflection as many of you will know, as I think I may even have indicated to um, to the brand's own current creative director in a live video. Uh, Reflection does extremely well for Amouage, as far as I know. In fact, I think in the past it's been described as one of their bread and butter scents, you know, one of the ones that they just need to keep going because um, it generates a lot of income for them. Um, so even though I'm not a huge fan of, of Reflection, I am impressed with this. And so there are clearly some elements from reflection that are present here that that don't bother me. I mean, far from bothering me, I, I find it really, really um, attractive. Jonathan says, I get something different from Bellam every time. Love the complexity. JP Music says, reflection isn't a bad association. Um, and Rachel says, I love reflection. But I'm, I'm kind of, it's, it's no good sort of saying it reminds me of reflection without telling you what else there is in there. So. What you get, <clears throat> or at least what I get, is a very, very powerful sense of, of whiteness. I think Bellam, Beautiful Soul, is, is an excellent name for this perfume. I wonder which came first, you know, was the concept to do something about um, purity and cleanliness and things being unadulterated, undiluted? Um, Iris, of course, is superb at conveying whiteness. Um, but this isn't an overly rooty iris. It, it isn't an overly carroty iris. It isn't dusty. You know, those are all attributes that I love about iris, but you don't really get them here. What you get instead is coming through from the base a lot of sweetness from materials like tonka bean, maybe from uh, vanilla. And I think that's where the connection with reflection comes in, because reflection is in many ways a kind of glassy vanilla. And reflection is also meant to be about a kind of pristine quality and a purity and a cleanliness. Um, and, and I suppose that's what the two of them have in common. But this is, this isn't anywhere near as cold. You know, scents that, 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 that start trying to convey a sense of the celestial, a sense of the supernatural. I'm thinking maybe of something like Chanel number no. 22. They do veer towards coldness because I suppose it's, I suppose it kind of stands to reason because the, the kind of cultural association, if you're going supernatural, if you're going spiritual, heat, I suppose, would tend to be associated with with more infernal locales, you know, with, with devilish um, connotations. And so I suppose if you're doing something angelic, um, you, you, you almost sort of 
inevitably will go towards territories that are colder. But this never becomes too cold. I'm just going to label the blotter, let it develop for a bit, um, and tell you what the... Um, <laughs> I've just looked at the brand's own blurb and it actually uses the word warm to describe it, which I'm not sure I agree with. But anyway, Bellam, uh, according to the brand, a buttery oris sits in contemplation, ready to let go of the past, fully present in the moment. Bellam is a warm, embracing fragrance that was inspired by a peaceful time to quiet the mind and heal the soul, says Eugene, founder and creative director. Making space for the self is about bringing awareness to the present moment, and Bellam inspires that kind of stillness. Since Bellam is an Antoine Lee creation, there is liveliness and movement within the fragrance's comforting stillness. <clears throat> Somebody says it smells like an angel in latex. Well, yes, that kind of slightly plasticky quality. Um, Anchored in preciously rich Oris Palida butter, warmth radiates from golden-hued tonka, touches of fruity fresh vanilla are deepened with lush dark cacao bean extract accented with ginger and cardamom. Angelic musks impart an ethereal lift, signaling the dawn of better days ahead. And I go along with um, I go along with ethereally as well. But I keep thinking about reflection. I seriously, seriously do keep thinking about reflection. So let's also do the one that came out first. So this is La Douleur Exquise, uh, Beautiful Sadness, um, which is a great name for a perfume, actually, isn't it? The other day I was wearing this and, and um, somebody said, oh, well, you know, you smell really good. What is it? So I, I gave them the name and then their, their face sort of fell. I said, no, but isn't, don't you think it's actually a fantastic name for a perfume? And I'm not sure they agreed with me, but I think it's a great name for a perfume. Um, so this is also by Antoine Lee, came out earlier this year. And, I, I, you know, I don't mind sort of saying straight away that it's it's, it's my favourite of the two. Um, I just think maybe there's something about Bellam. Oh, Eurus is definitely a great name for a perfume, isn't it, Rich? Did you have something to do with the name then, sir? Um, maybe there's something... Maybe there's just too much reflection for me in, in Bellam, but let's let's go to to Dula Exquise. Um, <clears throat> mm, I see, this is interesting. Now, I became aware of this perfume when it came out, just kind of peripherally. I became aware of the fact that, you know, somebody from the sort of critical community had released a perfume, and I thought, oh, you know, must, must smell that one day. And I also became aware of people saying that it was very much uh, a kind of take on portrait of a lady, which then made me think, oh, perhaps I'll let some time pass before I smell it, because I don't think I'm ready for another portrait of a lady clone. Um, oh, Rich says, whoever came up with that name must be some kind of genius. <laughs> okay, 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 I get it. Well done, well done. Um, so then I smelt it, and I can see why some people would have made the connection with... Um, portrait of a lady but this really 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 is not a portrait of a lady clone in in any way um the connection is a rose there is a beautiful rose note here but this is this is somehow an an angrier perfume and yet it's also softer and more tender which is why beautiful sadness is a great name for it because there is a sense of bitterness here it's almost like the feeling of getting to the point where you realize that actually no you don't want to you don't want to seek revenge for the wrongs that have been done to you because you realize that by doing so you would only be hurting yourself and you would only be damaging yourself and so you you come to terms with the sadness and you realize the best thing that you need to do that the only the best thing for you to do is to let go and move on and i think I think that's what makes the sadness beautiful, because it's a sadness of enlightenment, right? Beautiful sadness or exquisite pain, says Patchouli Papi. Eura says, I get a fuzzy, velvety, burgundy rose dripping with a thick bronze fondant. Perfect description, Mr. P, says Rachel. Thank you. I, I think I was rather ble completely unrehearsed, of course, Rachel. <clears throat> but I think one of the reasons why I prefer this one is because this also has a kind of retro quality to it. Shades of retro, hints of retro, echoes of retro. You know, it's not a pastiche. And the retro territory that it seems to go to is, is Bondi from Piguet. 
because to me if if we if we do go along with the portrait of a lady comparison then i would say okay this is like the love child we never knew we needed of portrait of a lady and uh, piquet's bondi and if that isn't enough of a sell for you then i don't know what will be um because there is there is a, that that hint of anger in there which comes through in the leather but then there's also the softness that comes with with the rose and it is also um really really complex um it, it is more abstract than most mainstream sense would be at the moment it isn't quite so literal it isn't quite so obviously figurative there are things in it that you want to unpeel you know layers that you want to open up and discover um I get a really stemmy, fresh green rose that has lots of thorns, says JP. So, so well, there you go. You, you kind of conceptually get the same thing. You know, you get the beautiful flower, but it has thorns. I definitely get leather, says Yura. Um, and that could also be to do with the kind of spicy quality that I think comes through the human. Um, mm -hmm. Really, really a, a good piece of work. Highly, highly wearable. Um, makes me want to kind of, you know, do an interview with Eugene even more. Um, just to kind of pick his brains about perfume creation and 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 some some of his favorite scents. Let me very 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 quickly read <clears throat> the brand's own blurb. So where are we? Okay, it is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Starts the website blurb. Who among us has not experienced the pain of loss mixed with the memory of love, transforming into the paradox of sweet torment? Douleur Exquise, Exquisite Pain, explores this theme in perfume, placing at its heart a singular rose, the icon of love. Representing love lost, the rose melts like red beeswax into beautifully doleful bodily and meditative tributaries of cumin, incense, myrrh, and patchouli. Very, very heavy on the resins and balsams, absolutely. At once, spicy, earthy, dry, and fleshy, Douleur Exquise never abandons the iconic flower of romance and love. Instead, it keeps a fresh, plump rose petal in front of your nose to remind you, like a sunrise after darkest night, that all is not lost. It can always be time to begin and perhaps learn to love again. Great message. Um, Jonathan says, these fragrances give you something to do or think about, not a mindless experience. Couldn't agree more. Uh, Rachel says, I told Eugene I want my historic house to smell of douleur exquise. Fosco says, I find similarities to Amouage's Imitation Man with the iris backlit by the rose. Interesting. I would need to smell imitation again. In my mind, I always get imitation and portrayal mixed up, but I do still have my bottle of imitation somewhere. I would need to check it out. <clears throat> um, SSD Fragrance says, I love that you called the description a blurb. Reminds me of childhood. It's probably the teacher in me. I still talk about blurbs, I'm afraid. Let's have another sniff of it. Really interesting. And uh, officially, the notes are... A Bulgarian rose, a Turkish rose, iris and frankincense, clove, cumin and saffron, castorium, patchouli, uh, cedar, labdanum, apopanax and myrrh. So yeah, it's rich, rich stuff. If I did have to make one criticism though, and you know, this is just personal taste, is that I wish Douleur Exquise were a bit louder. I wish actually it had a kind of portrait of a lady sillage, but, but I suppose the idea was to make it a bit more toned down. And Belle Am for me is, it's just so much like Reflection. And I should say Reflection Man, by the way. I mean Reflection Man. Okay, put those aside. There will definitely be a blotter update on these. You will also have noticed that I have got two uh, Givenchy's here. Now, a few weeks ago, on one of the videos, I mentioned Givenchy Equivoque. Here's the box of it. Um, because I was really quite taken with it. And we don't talk a lot about Givenchy's um, exclusive range. Their mainstream sense, I mean, you know, one of my nieces absolutely loves Lanterdi, and um, she's not going to be watching this, so what she doesn't know is that she's getting a bottle of it for Christmas. Of course, this will turn out to be the one episode that she watches, right? Their, their mainstream sense, uh, you know, I, I probably wouldn't be sorry if I, if I never sniffed some of them again. But the... Um, <clears throat> The and when I say mainstream, I mean their recent mainstream ones, okay. But their their exclusives, 
are really quite interesting. And the one that I just showed you, Equivoc, came in a trio, which also consisted of, apologies if I'm mangling these words, Foudroyant and Noctambule. I wonder if they're actually even real French words or whether they're sort of like portmanteau words, made up words. Um, and then I smelt the other two and I thought, hang on, hang on, hang on. We need to give these their fair share of the limelight as well because they don't reinvent the wheel. They're not especially um, innovative, but they do what they do really well. And I've enjoyed getting to know them a bit better as well. So um, they're, they're all in a way trying to go into that kind of Arabian Udi territory. It's obviously the brand's attempt to corner that market through their exclusive sense. But they do so in a kind of haute couture, restrained, elegant, suave way that you would hope to see from Givenchy. And I think that's why they're, they're worth your attention. So Equivoque we've already talked about, and I will try to link to it. Um, I'll try to set up a little link to it. I always forget whether it's going to come up on that side or that side, but you will see a link should appear any second now, taking you to the video that's got the um, the Equivoc review. But I wanted to talk about the others. So here's Foudroyant, because um, they, they kind of admirably stay away from being or turning into like, crass sledgehammers, if you know what I mean. There are too many brands that take the easy route when they want to do the Arabian thing, which is that they do some kind of, you know, saffrony, leathery, faux oudy rose, um, or they go down the spicy route and they basically stick tons of cumin in it, and the, and the whole thing becomes a bit of a mess. But um, this is, well, let's, let's smell it together. So, okay, this is Foudroyant, which considering that it has a, it, a lot of heavy hitters as well, is really, really quite admirably restrained. Um, there's a kind of vanillic, labdanum, smoky quality that comes through straight away. Nice touch of spices, you know, maybe something like cardamom, pepperiness, maybe cinnamon. Um, but it's all it's it's all done in a sophisticated way. So it's almost I mean, this isn't going to sound like a compliment, but I suppose I mean it as a compliment this way. So it, it, in this particular context, I mean it as a compliment. So it's not like, for example, going down to a truly, truly authentic, loud, noisy, bustling, crowded souk somewhere in the Middle East but a more kind of travel brochure version of the souk where the lighting is perfect. And, you know, you might get sort of those Moroccan lamps that when you turn the lights on, they cast beautiful star-shaped shadows on the ground. Um, it, it, it's got that sort of picture, picture postcard, perfect composed quality to it, um, which is quite attractive because what it means is that you don't get roughness you don't get edges that feel as though they need to be smoothed out. Sometimes you want that, but that's not what you're getting here. And I think that's appropriate for a, for a Givenchy release. What does the brand say about it? So Foudroyant, they say, opens the door to the secret apartment in the Givenchy Hotel Particulier and scans the guests with a piercing gaze. If looks could kill, makes perfect sense, and each glance is a tempting invitation to discover the house's mysteries. If anybody understood any of that, please let me know what it means. This amber fragrance combines supreme elegance with the most intense addiction. Aromatic notes of cedar merge with a mysterious woody depth, bringing warmth, toluba balsam uh, from Latin America is obtained by specialists who climb the trees to extract this amber elixir. Okay, thanks for sharing. Between light and darkness, this dual fragrance is wrapped in an exceptionally pure oud essence, Extracted with great savoir faire by master distillers, labdanum accessorizes this charismatic fragrance to create a powerfully seductive scent. Okay, well, forget about the stuff, of, you know, about the, the amazing. Is it a Moroccan lamp made in China, says Natalia? No, let's say, let's say it's a genuine Moroccan lamp. Like maybe, maybe what it is, is like the interior of, what is that beautiful hotel in Marrakesh? The Mamounia, the Mamounia. Okay, so... It's got a lot of authenticity, it's got some history, but it hasn't got the rough hustle and bustle, very, very attractive hustle and bustle of the Jamal Fana or the or, or the souk or anything like that. So it's it's the kind of 
yeah, it's the kind of cleaned up version, I suppose. Um, like an Italian painting of a souk, says Rachel. I like that idea as well. Any favourite painters, Italian painters who have done paintings of souks? And yes, I suppose, Rachel, you're, you're onto something there because it does feel a little bit like the West looking on to the East and, and putting its own spin on it, its own interpretation. But as a, a souk where you overpay for a mug with the name of the country on it, <laughs> let's go with a kind of half yes. We want authenticity. No, but this isn't inauthentic. It's just a very particular version of authenticity, okay? But as an amber per perfume that is not crazy loud, so it's not an ambre sultan, but it feels as though it's made with good quality stuff, with the volume turned to an interesting level. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. And it certainly doesn't come across as cheap or crude or crass in any way. Let's do the other one. Now, Noctambul was probably my least favorite of the three, but, but still well worth checking out. Let's have a spray there. These three, by the way, I do want to get to because I have not sniffed them at all. And I'd be very curious to try them. So Noctambul. Yeah, this is this is probably the least interesting of the three. It's a bit more of a sort of simplistic, more accessible rose. And, and especially coming after something like, you know, it, 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 it can't really stand up to the likes of Douleur Exquise. But I'll just read you... Um, the blurb while we're waiting for this to settle. After the stroke of midnight, Noctambul reveals a dark and mysterious side in the Givenchy Hotel Particulier. I don't know why they're calling it a hotel. This night owl leads the crowds to the boudoir to keep the party going until dawn. Mm. Yeah, don't try selling it like that. This fragrance pays tribute to one of the most iconic flowers, the centifolia rose, delicately hand picturing the month of May. The petals deliver their floral signature through both rose essence and rose infusion. Beyond this elegant floral facet, the sillage unveils an enigmatic scent associating daring rose with the earthy notes of the papyrus root accord. This is wrapped in the richest Malaysian oud to reveal animalic and woody notes. The floral woody irreverence is dressed up with the vibrant and spicy notes of pink pepper and Cuban essence. Okay, they're overselling it in the sense of, I think they're sort of making a mistake trying to make out that it's some kind of tempestuous wild party animal. Um, because because it's not it's it's actually quite a delicate gentle slightly dark tinged rose you know you do not smell this and think ooh oody rose um but 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 it's fine it's fine the ones to check out are foudroyant and um equivoque but you know considering that these are part of the um LVMH stable and what some of the more recent Dior Collection Privé scents releases were like, I, I, I think these are these are more interesting. I think they're more interesting. And I think if they had come out as Dior scents, um, people would have been raving about them probably. <clears throat> okay, we're nearly at the half hour mark and don't forget that there's another video coming after this one. I want to get to the um, Goldfield and Banks trio that I've got here, or at least two of them, the two more recent ones. And I'm very, very nervous about this because I don't want it to mean that the very last uh, review video of the year ends on a downer, because I have so far yet to be impressed by anything from Goldfield and Banks. I know that the brand has won a lot of fans, and that's fine. You know, there are also fans of Creed out there and fans of Joe Malone, so I'm told. Um, but what I have tried from the brand so far has always struck me as being rather um, thin and wan and unconvincing, uh, overly on the synthetic side, which was the, the, the lime one that came out. Was it Pacific Lime? And everybody was raving about Pacific Lime, and I smelt it. And I thought, this really doesn't do it for me. So these three are part of a series that the brand has done <clears throat> uh, called the Botanical Series. And the most recent one, now I want to get this right. I think the most recent one is Island Lush. So let's start with that. The whole point of the brand is that it's meant to feature... Um, sense, sorry, it's meant to feature materials that are native to Australia. But I think 
the brand has sort of taken a slightly more relaxed view with this with this botanical series range. So is it I where's the island lush? Oh, here we are. It's the one I had. So island lush is meant to contain uh, sandalwood from the South Pacific, and one of them is meant to contain an agar wood um, that has been grown in Australia. And so that's why that's how it counts. Now, let me just get the right one. No, here we go. Island lush. Let us see what we can see. What are people saying? I agree but about Goldfield and Banks as S. Umar have tried most of their sense of not been impressed. Okay. Oh, purple suede. You've got to try purple suede, says time to musk up. Okay, I will. See, I keep getting, the, the, there's obviously a very particular style to this brand that I think the, the, the creative direction <clears throat> is just following. They're, they're sort of doing what they do, which is to create scents that I think you just, you think you get instantly that are monodimensional, more on the simple side. And it's just not a style that especially does anything for me. Um, So, hmm, I'm not even sure what to say about it, where, you know, whether there's anything particular that I'm meant to be getting from it. It's got a kind of quiet leather quality to it. And, and a sort of pulverized leather feel. You know, the main thing <clears throat> when I sprayed it, I was immediately reminded of Bulgari Black, but without the nuances, without the tea facets, without the interesting kind of petroleum facets, this seems to be leathery woody. But I have to say, it's not making me think that it's uh, as sort of as, as as crude as some of the other ones. It's suede, but pretty smoky and a little dirty, says Time to Musk Up. Smokiness, maybe. Now, what did you say I needed to try? Purple, purple suede. Okay, I will take your word for it. Let me just label the blotter first, actually. Purple suede is this one. Now, these I genuinely have not. Demi Rawling. Loves Goldfield and Banks. That's all you need to know, says Time to Musk Up. Ooh. <laughs> I've never met Demi Rawling. Um, anyway, let's just smell, clear the nose. <clears throat> Why did you make me smell this one? So hang on. Purple suede is meant to be Tasmanian lavender. Gorgeous lavender, says Time to Musk Up. Um, Persilase is the real eye candy of frag comp, says Yura. I'm glad you've noticed. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, this phase is looking very, very, very tired at the moment as we approach the end of term, but thank you very much. Who is doing to me rolling, says Claire. That's the best comment we've had so far. <laughs> Sorry. Um, purple suede. Okay, so why is purple suede? The first question I've got is why is purple suede a lavender perfume? <clears throat> and it's, to me at the moment, the purple suede is smelling like cheap sweets, like the kind of sweets that I would have loved devouring by the handful when I was like five. And maybe there's a kind of camphoraceous-y, lavender -y quality coming through it. I mean, okay, there is a leatheriness to it as well. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what to say. And I think this is what I felt about all of them, is that I didn't really know what to say. I'm going to have to compose my thoughts. And Silky Woods, let's try Silky Woods since we're doing it all. Now, I think Silky Woods was the one that came out last year. Uh, 
to be fair, a lavender leather is something I'd want to smell, says a misspelled, to, mis, misspelled tomato. A bit. Mm. Is it a lavendery leather? I suppose. So this is... I've completely forgotten. Um, silky Woods. God. Okay, I see. <clears throat> Mm. Apologies to the people to have this, you know, have this as just as like an audio only podcast. But what you saw was what some of you, you know, what, what you didn't hear, I should say, is me flinging my head away from the blotter just now. Um, mm. It's just very, very, very sickly sweet starting, very kind of sugary vanillic what's the material oh, oh hang on so that must mean that this must be the one that contains the tropical australian agar wood okay i'm getting sweets and caramel and sugar and gummy bears and too much of that and then some kind of darkness coming through trying to make the whole thing even sicklier um dj no comments like that please because you will get you will get the channel banned or something you will get um <clears throat> you'll get the bots coming along and <clears throat> censoring your comments let's go back to island lush um island lush actually out of the three of them is probably um the most interesting because because it's the driest and it's the one that is making me think more and more of Bulgari Black and making me think, where is my bottle of Bulgari Black? I really need to dig it out. Um, and purple suede. Purple suede makes me feel sad that we don't have prints on this planet anymore. Um, but I'm sure that wasn't the perfume's intention. They're, they're just they're just not terribly engaging. I don't find them terribly engaging. I find them I find some of them pleasant and <sighs> insert another word for pleasant, pleasant and innocuous, which is kind of saying the same thing. Um, but but I, I, I don't feel that there is anything for me to engage with in them. I, I don't really get you know what sort of message I'm meant to get from them particularly. I, th I think they're just really not meant for me. So let us go back to where we started. Let me dig out my blotters of, <clears throat> of Eugene's sense. So this was uh, this was Bellam. Um, reflection, but better. And Douleur Exquise, yeah, is so complex. Really, really interesting. Well done, Eugene. Well, well done, Antoine Lee. Okay. I'm sure there are lots more things that I could have reviewed this year, and heaven knows there are a few things on my list, but they're going to have to wait till 2023. I'm not going to sort of say goodbyes and thank yous now. I will save that for the 30th of December when we do our top 10. But we have got a bonus episode coming up in a couple of minutes because I'm going to come back with a video on a perfume that you have all heard of, you all know, you have all smelt it, some of you love it, some of you hate it, and it's celebrating a huge um, anniversary this year. Um, so hopefully you will be able to join me for that one in a few minutes. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for putting up with all of the reviews this year so far. And be good. Bye now.